Okay, so let's get started. Uh, next, we have Stefano De Angelis, also from Team Mary, who's going to tell us about SMEFT and scattering amplitudes. Do you know how to get rid of the bar, the zoom bar? Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, let me just let me close, otherwise, please. We actually see it well, we don't see any bar. Oh, okay. No, I, I see the bar. That, that's why. Sorry, just one second. Sure. Yeah, here it is. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, let me thank the organizer for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to present uh, a recent work that I've been doing with uh, my friend Manuel. So uh, our recent work was <clears throat> about the standard model EFTs and scattering amplitudes, and in particular was about the computation of SMEF anomalous dimension by onshore methods. Uh, <clears throat> yes, but more like 99% of this uh, talk could be about the um, project that, that I've done with Manuel and a little bit of some follow-up that have uh, been done. Okay, so let me start with a brief outline. So I will just uh, introduce to you the SMEFT. I think it has been mentioned a couple of times during the, the, the conference, but I think uh, an introduction is due. And then uh, we'll review the construction of the standard model from purely on shell arguments uh, perturbatively. This is, I think, um, and in Andres, Andres' definition, I fall in the category of people do, that don't like Lagrangians. Uh, then I will go through the a, method, a new method for the classification of EFT interactions, uh, a method not, um, known in the literature to compute anomalous dimensions and uh, our results, the new results about the mixing metrics for the dimension eight operators in this method at leading order. And at the end, if I still have time, <clears throat> I will uh, mention some algorithm to go beyond leading order. So this method is a systematic and model independent framework to characterize both experimental deviation uh, <clears throat> uh, from the prediction of the standard model and its possible extensions. Uh, the particle content of the SMEFT is the same as the standard model, uh, the same as the standard model, but some putative heavy BMS modes are integrated out at low energies and leave us with some effective interaction which are organized by the mass dimension. This is the last time I show a Lagrangian in my presentation. And uh, so the the leading contribution to this math is given by dimension six operators. Uh, Weinberg operators at dimension uh, five are very constrained by experiments, so we are going to discard them. And uh, But there are also interesting processes where the dominant contribution comes from um, higher, dim higher dimensional operators, and then dimension. Um, Closer study uh, to dimension eight operators is uh, is a well posed problem. Okay, so let me start with a review of something that has been known for a long time now in the scattering community: the fact that, uh, for example, if we start from the generic from uh, the generic three point amplitude of gluons. Uh, without saying anything about these FABC con um, structures, con okay. these matrices or these tensors. Um, and for example, we make our most generic concepts about the four point amplitude. We find out that if we want to, uh, we want for this amplitude to uh, obey factorization, then we need to impose um, uh, that for this F, um, this F to satisfy Jacobi identities. Uh, 
uh, basically this argument can be run uh, in many different processes. And for example, if we consider non-abelian vectors coupled to matter, we find that uh, factorization introduces Lie algebra structures. And for example, if we consider abelian vectors coupled to matter plus uh, Yukawa coupling, this factorization introduces some charge conservation condition. Wait one second, we lost your, your image. What? Sorry. Hello? Sorry. Maybe it's unplugged. This thing is out, yeah, the projector is off. Okay, just uh, give us a minute. Oh. Okay. That's the issue. It's not there. Oh, it's just the laser. Check your overheated. Oh, we don't. We don't know. Yeah. Uh, probably. You know, it could also just be on a timer. Oh no, it's on. No, I just turned it back on. Oh, I see. Good. I, I don't know. Yes. Okay. Okay. Hello? All right, just another minute. Okay, okay. So I think we are back um, on the screen, so you can you can continue. Sorry about that. No, it's fine. Okay. Just one second to get rid of the bar. Okay, something that. Um, uh, Okay, yeah, uh, this argument about factorization has been known for a long time. Something that has been less known is that we can also find anomalies from uh, scattering amplitudes. And these have been done first in a paper by Wang, Megedi, and a follow-up paper by Chen, Wang, and Megedi. In particular, the argument goes like this. We can compute one loop scattering amplitudes from unitarity. And basically, we, so we know that anomaly, chiral anomalies are due to chiral interactions or so fermions running into the loop. So let's focus just in fermi, uh, into the fermion contribution in the loop. And we can, uh, we can split, okay, we can write down two combinations like a parity even and which is fine as you can imagine and a parity odd um, term. And for example, let's compute one loop amplitudes for, for gluon amplitudes. And let's consider, for example, two W bosons and one B boson. If we consider the, the, the amplitude from the unitary techniques, we find this very nice ans uh, answer. And we know that this coefficient is not problematic at all. But Something that we should worry about is when we compute the, um, the one loop four point amplitude with uh, 3W and 1B, because this, um, the, coefficient of, the coefficient of this amplitude is proportional to something that should vanish uh, according to QFT textbook by this anomaly cancellation condition. And, um, Basically, the argument goes like this. We can consider uh, both for the parity even and parity odd term, the u that goes to zero limit. And we find that uh, bo both terms seems to have some problem. In particular, the parity even develops some double pole. And while the uh, parity odd term develops some four some factorization channel, which is not allowed, is not consistent with uh, the fact, okay, perturbatively, the um, residue in the, the residues, uh, the um, factorization channels for, point, for, for four point amplitudes are completely captured by um, three level amplitudes. So we, we need to cure both these uh, problems. And to do that, we, the only thing we can do is to insert a, a proper rational term. And in particular, the rational terms that, we, that can cure these problems 
uh, given the only possibility we can uh, that we can have are those two. But so we can notice that for the parity even term, this is completely fine. This cancel the double pole and we have no problem. But for the parity odd term, the, if we can, if we want to cancel the the additional uh, U factorization channel, we insert correction to the S and T channels. And this is, again is, is inconsistent with um, three level factorization. So there is no way to cure the singularity structures of uh, odd terms and for amplitude to be consistent with locality and unitarity, we must require for the coefficient of the odd term to vanish. So this was the review part. Let me go to the, about the standard model, let me go to the SMEFT. So the first thing we have to do is to construct an order random basis of EFT operators. And to do that, there is an old fashioned strategy to write down all the possible uh, structures and then systematically remove redundancies using Bianchi identities, uh, IBP identities, fields identities, field definitions. And then at the very end, we have to restrict to a flavor independent basis in the case we have identical fields. But these, these can be very uh, involved. And as you can see from the first paper where people attempt to, to do this for the SMEFT, which was in the 80s, uh, 86. And the first paper where they managed to find really the uh, independent, the non redundant basis for dimension six operators, which was 24 years, years later. So, and also to help in this task, we have um, the Hilbert series, which allows us to uh, count how many operators with a fixed mass dimension are present in our EFT. So the, mod the modern perspective, which was introduced for, for this map by a paper, uh, in a paper by Shadmi and Weiss, um, is the observation that uh, independent EFT oper operators correspond to independent scattering amplitudes. So to simplify the classification, we can restrict to contact terms, which are polynomial in the spinor variables, and classify all the independent contact terms. To do that, uh, IBP identities now become momentum conservation, fields identities become shorter identities, and identical fields are just permutation, some of the permutation on, on identical fields. And all the other constraints are automatically taken into account. Just to reconnect to uh, Manuel's talk, uh, if you look, for example, at the Riemann cube interaction, uh, the, I think the first paper where it was shown that in four, dimen in four dimensions there was uh, just one Riemann cube interaction or R cubed interaction, uh, which was non trivial, was a paper in the 80s by Metzayev and Setlin. And this paper is full of combination, but in our approach, we can uh, say that there is just one term in four dimensions independent from the other in five seconds. Uh, I want to mention that a, lo a lot of work has been done in this direction, and uh, you can see a list of authors which, in various combinations, wrote a lot of paper about this. And in particular, I want to mention uh, Chinese group um, Li, uh, Ren, Xu, Xiao, uh, Yu, and Zheng, which classified um, the, all the SMEFT interaction up to dimension. Uh, up to dimension nine. But in our paper, we introduce something, a new perspective on this, a, a new way of doing this, which is very simple and is very useful for something that I, I will mention in a minute. So let me uh, write down each um, structure uh, as a graph. So let me write this. Uh, so. Uh, we, identif uh, we identify each structure with a, <clears throat> with a graph. In this graph, each vertex is associated to a particle. In each edge uh, corresponds to, if it's blue, to a square, if it, if it is red, to an angle invariant. The orientation of these edges uh, keeps track of the sign, and uh, the valence of each vertex gives 
uh, the helicity and the uh, number of momentum insertion of uh, each particles. Okay, so in this in this way, let's see how shouting identities, uh, for example, look. And we see that with uh, this formalism, uh, shouting identity is nothing but untying a crossing between two edges. And basically, this, this means that uh, basis of elements up to shouting identities is given by uh, a classification of planar graphs in this with this method. And momentum conservation also translates into a series of very simple constraints on the graphs. And okay, and the algorithm—I should mention this also—gives give, both a basis of structures, which is very useful, but also an algorithmic way to decompose structure which are not in our basis. So for example, if we want to classify all the contact terms with mass dimension six, with two plus gluons, two uh, minus gluons, and two scalars, these all uh, we have, and this correspond to this series of, um, of uh, terms. Uh, okay, here in the bottom, I, there is the link to the GitHub code uh, where I coded all this algorithm. Uh, what is crucial about this is the fact that this method uh, plus some, um, some something that I've taken from some ideas that I've taken from the a paper by the Ryu, Kitara, Machado, Shadmi, and Vice uh, allows for um, a classification of EFT um, uh, contact terms for any mass, any spin, and any number of legs. And this is uh, the topic of the, um, the project that I mentioned before that I'm writing up. Hopefully it will be out next month, but probably at the beginning of February. So, okay, now we, can, we classified all the kinematic structures. We need just to uh, classify color singlets and this is uh, we, di we did that just by standard group theory techniques. Then we have to take into account uh, identical particles. If they are identical bosons, we need to apply uh, Young symmetrizer. If they are identical fermions and no flavor, we need to apply a Young anti-symmetrizer. If we have flavor, we need to consider all possible Young projectors corresponding to an equivalent irreducible representations of Sn, where n is the number of identical particles. Let me just now review something that most of you already know, it is how to compute the renormalization group for uh, flow from the S matrix. And this is based on a uh, combination of the Kalan semantic equation and, and so uh, how much time do I have? Uh, let's see. You have I, uh, 15, uh, 13 minutes, including questions. Oh, good, good, very good. Okay, so I can slow down. Okay, uh, com uh, combined with um, this very nice formula that uh, from a paper by Karnawo and Villel. Uh, and basically this gives uh, a way to compute the how these operators mixes uh, in the, sorry, I should mention this, that uh, here the gamma JI is the UV mixing matrix for these operators. And we, for simplicity, for simplicity we consider just minimal form factors, which uh, allows us to uh, discard the Beta, uh, beta function terms in the kalan siemens equation, and we expand the leading order. And this gives a very nice formula, which uh, allows us to compute the one loop mixing matrix of the, uh, in the UV mixing matrix, just by minimal form factors, four point amplitudes, uh, a Lorentz phase space integral, and uh, up to a subtraction, a subtraction of some IR uh, anomalous uh, dimensions. So the first step in our work was to reproduce 
some known results uh, in, in the literature. So some pap uh, three papers by uh, Jenkins, Manuel, and Trott. And we found perfect agreement with them up to a change of basis because now we don't have any more uh, like we don't have the same basis because we constructed the basis uh, through on shell uh, from matrix elements. So it's slightly different, but it's just some linear algebra problem. We did the same for uh, the dimension several operators, which were known. And actually, this A are uh, just placeholder for some combination of the couplings because just to show to you the form of the matrix. And then our new result um, about on the mixing matrix of dimension eight operators in this math, we did this uh, in the just for uh, one flavor in this math, which simplified a bit the task, but uh, we are planning to do the full um, the full matrix with flavor and maybe going beyond leading order in, uh, I think, hopefully a few months. And okay, as we see, there are a lot of zeros there and this, this very long list of zeros can be uh, explained by supersymmetric embedding, some helicity selection rules, some, okay, some length, mixing between operators with different length and some momentum, uh, moment, angular momentum um, conditions. And basically this was uh, our main result. So uh, to go beyond, the first thing we need is, uh, is uh, higher point amplitudes and form factors. And because we want to consider mixing between uh, operators with different length. And to do that, okay, we need to consider, uh, we need to compute scattering amplitude with more than four legs and no minimal form factors. So the, this might worry us because, because BCFW-like recursion relations might fail. In particular, we know that uh, the standard model three level amplitudes are three line constructibles. Form factors for irrelevant operators with no derivative in insertion are on shell constructibles uh, as well. But when we have derivative, uh, opera uh, derivative insertion in the operators, uh, this uh, recursion relation fail. And in particular, since we have problem with recursion relation, we want to find some algorithm that gives uh, uh, an amplitude where we have uh, we don't have any spurious pole, which are much easier to work with when we do generalized unitarity. Uh, so, okay, yeah, we look for a fully on shell algorithm algorithm to uh, to compute three level amplitudes, but for uh, okay, most important, more important is uh, no minimal form factors just from lower point structures. Uh, obviously this algorithm does not give a very compact result, uh, but so, and is not as fast as BCFW-like regression relation, but on the other end, the result, the locality and the unitarity are manifesting these results. So the algorithm goes like this. We enumerate all the, it's very uh, straightforward. Uh, we enumerate all the possible um, singular, uh, singularity structure consistent with locality. So all the trivalent graphs plus some eventual uh, lam lambda phi to the fourth interaction plus some eventual, uh, eventual effective vertex, uh, which are compatible with uh, the standard model interaction and particle content. Then to each trivalent graph, a unique kinematic back, uh, denominator, denominator is, is associated, uh, which is the product of the denominators, obviously. But this is not the end of the story because some extra, um, uh, extra consideration are needed for amplitudes, for example, with uh, vectors or if we want with gravitons. Uh, 
uh, unitarity fixes completely the color structure associated to each graph. And finally, since we have uh, an algorithm to generate uh, independent structures, <clears throat> independent kinematic uh, polynomial uh, structures, we use that to generate the kinematic numerators. Uh, so this answer says uh, each, uh, each, each structure has a, a coefficient to be fixed. And this coefficient can be fixed uh, by some preliminary checks by demanding that the ansatz is not, is not redundant. And then we uh, impose, uh, we fix fully this coefficient that um, by <clears throat> uh, matching over the different factorization channels. And to speed up this computation, it's very important that these, these coefficients here are rational, so we can fit this uh, with, we can do the fit with uh, finite fields, which is very fast. Again, not as fast as BCFW, obviously, but uh, it can compete with uh, final rules and is iterative. And in this constructure, we sh should not worry about um, contact term, which, screw, uh, which uh, ruin the, um, the behavior uh, or ruin the um, uh, behavior when, okay, which make the BCFW like recursion relation fade because since we are, since this polynomial structure, are, this contact term are polynomial structures. And basically, the fact that we are ignoring them, we are effectively uh, shifting the coefficients of the, uh, the Wilson coefficients of our. Um, Smeft interactions uh, with respect to what we would get using final rules. And now we have to apply this, this machinery to go to higher order, but this that has not been done yet. So this was everything. Thank you. Uh, Andres? Uh, in this uh, construction, the amplitude. Can you match it to the operative basis? Is yeah. that all, if the operative basis is best dimension eight, can you match it? Uh, do, do you mean this? Compare these coefficients to the operative basis in the standard model EFT. So can you do that or not? Uh, you mean no, with, um, with Yeah, like with given that operative basis, how would you match? If you throw away contact terms, how would you know the relation? But, but the fact that you throw uh, it is just throw, it, if you throw away contact term, you are just shifting the the Wilson coefficient of the uh, of the uh, the the Wilson coefficient of the interaction, which would give exactly the same contact term. It's yeah, just matching, right? They're just redefining. Yes, it's just redefining. That, that's why we can ignore them. Okay. It's just. Sorry. Sorry. In your basis construction, you use like momentum conservation and shouting. So for high enough points, there should be ground determinant constraints on the kinematics. Are you taking them into account as well? And do they eliminate redundant operators? I think th those constraints are automatically taken into account. Yes, I, I do think so. Yes, if if the if the answer if it is enough an answer yes or no, uh, my answer is yes. I think in general it you wouldn't be taken into account. But only scalars, right? No. Yeah. How do you know you're in four dimensions? What? What? If you only have mammal stamps, how would you know that you're in four dimensions, say, for scalars? I'm doing this using spinor analysis formalism, so I, I, I cannot be anywhere else than four dimension. No, but I think there's I, no linear relations between the between products of spinors, right? A higher dimensions, but. I also have a question, but maybe someone else has a question. 
Okay, Dimitrius. Okay, so I just want to say this dimension A calculation, it's very impressive, but these are all mixing of operators of the same dimension. Have you guys thought about how to get kind of the mass dependent mixing, say, of dimension six uh, with the standard model or dimension eight with dimension six? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, here, okay, here in this formula, here you would consider, okay, something that naively I would do is to consider in this S matrix, the S matrix of the F with the, with the, the effective interaction. So the, this term would be like dimension six, dimension six, and here you would have to compensate something that is dimension eight. But yeah, that, that would be my naive accept, expectation. Uh, Okay, because so, this, this, this formula picks up coefficients on logarithms of, of Mandelstam invariance, right? But, but there's other effects when you have masses. Yeah. That's what, what I was asking. But, okay, thanks. Uh, maybe one more question, Dimitri? Um, you had this nice uh, graphical rule about the so uh, Sodan identity. I was wondering what does momentum conservation look like in terms of a graphical rule? Uh, it isn't it the the way the I, I didn't show it because it doesn't look nice but if you write if you write down the 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 um, the constraint in terms of the adhesion symmetrics of these graphs it looks very very simple and maybe I, I if if you want we can chat on slack and I can show you the condition on the adhesion symmetrics of uh, the associated graphs. Right. So if there are no more questions, let, let's thank um, Stefano again.